Hello everybody, thank you for joining us. Um, it's good to be back, it's been a while since we've done a lawn analytical stream and um, yeah, we'll see how it goes. Um, we were gonna, it's, we're, we're Tiffany-less today, but she will be back at some point, but she's uh, she can't make it today. So it's myself, Shin and Amanda James and we are going over Lawns, what are we allowed to say? What it is, Shin? We're a bit of uh, worry of legal issues, aren't we? Because <laughs> we know probation. The, 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 there is nothing that Lawn is in possession of that is still confidential. <laughs> Those words and Lawn don't go together. <laughs> he's he's literally shown a picture of his literal asshole. <laughs> Even. Yeah, even that's not confidential anymore. Oh, yeah. Oh shit, D Shin, be quiet. They can only hear. Um... Oh Christ, there we go again. Right, sorry guys, bear with me. Um, it's been a while since I've had a technical issue, so they can't he they can't hear you, um, which is a bit unusual. So I'm blaming Streamlabs. It's shit. Right, say something, dude. Uh, guys, can you hear me? Testing one two three. Shin sounds miles away. Right, I, I, think, miles I think away. I think uh, I think we're good now. Just let us know if you can hear Shin, guys. In testing one two three testing. Only hear Andrew. Yeah, I think that was. Um... What about Amanda? Can she be here? Well, she's not said anything yet. <laughs> so, oh, we can. Yeah. It's... Hello. Great. Can anybody hear me? Right, well, thank you guys in the chat for bringing, yes. um, for bringing that to my attention uh, without anybody getting mad and saying get new internet access or something like that. Hey, by the way, guys, are you kind of, for all those people that had a bit of fun and joked that I needed to get a new provider, not tempting fate, but are you impressed that I think I've done about eight streams more where the internet hasn't gone down? If it happens, oh, you... if it happens now, I'm going to officially quit YouTube, and you're going to get no more streams from me. So there you, we go. You just jinxed yourself, man. I, I know. I, well, that's I... why I said, if I've jinxed myself, I'll be officially officially retiring from this payless endeavor. So well, um... people were saying somebody said it wouldn't be right without it, Andrew. So yeah, yeah, it's kind of the charm of Your this brand. ridiculous channel. Brand. You know, it's kind of like we're kind of like Lon's official unofficial correspondence in a way we're kind of like lawn's unofficial biographer this channel i like to think that's what we kind of are so it kind of makes sense that it's a fuck up yeah. <laughs> do you know what yeah. i mean yeah. i'm I'm, yeah. I'm trying to i'm trying to justify my own sloppiness which is pretty good i think i did a good job warts and all we are uh Covering, covering Lauren, uh, no matter, you know, w w w in order to cover Lauren, you have to be like Lauren. So we got to fuck up all the time. Um, yeah. It's a noble calling. Yes, yes, yes. We are, we are basically going along with the spirit of things and, you know, um, we're, honor, honor, we're honoring the cause. It's not really a cause, but our sort of little... Right, I like to do these, we're going to do a little bit of introspection now, some Burkitt-style introspection. I'm going to ask Amanda James, who I like to call our long connoisseur. I'm sorry to paint you with that brush, Amanda <laughs> James, but you have a ridiculous <clears throat> amount of knowledge when it comes to not just lawns kind of endeavours, but the, the catfishing and the calls. But scurrily, I think there's some, there's people out there that know more than you. I'm like, Wow. What 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 um, does Lon still 
do you still find him interesting despite everything that we've spoke about and everything that we've done? You know, what is it? Yeah. If I did, I wouldn't be spending my Sunday talking about him. That's what I was in the thinking. Woods talking about him with you guys. I do. If somebody catfished him today, I'd be right on it. I would want to hear all of it. I'd want, even though it would all be repetition. We've shit. heard it all before. Yep. I'd still want to hear it and pick out his lies and his bullshit. I can't tell you why he's so interesting, honestly. It's it's like we were talking about the other day, Andrew. He consistently makes the same mistakes over and over again. He never learns from them. Even if it's in his head, he knows he's able to recognize the patterns. Like with the latest Casey stuff, he could see it. There's you give me your Google number. That's how they that's how they tricked me in the past or you're saying shit that the catfish used to say, but it still won't click. It's every sign points to run away, Lauren. It's happening again. They're doing it again. And he refuses to see it. And I, that's what's very interesting to me. That's part of what's very interesting to me. That, that's and of course, the stream, actually, that trying to figure that one out. But, I, I know. I don't think we'd get anywhere. But I mean, well, it there's all it, it all comes down to a very simple reason and explanation he's so desperate yeah. that's all it is yeah. he's got to give it a chance anything no matter how ridiculous if it's casey morrow smoking crack in a gas station uh with a gun with my little ponies painted on it threatening to kill emma that's a ridiculous situation but it might be true and he wait might get to marry minute, her. Did that happen or did that just come well, out? Well, no, here? that's kind okay. of an amount like an amalgamation okay. of everything that's happened. But no. Shin, was your for, question for did that happen in the catfish scenario or did that happen in real life? What could yeah, you like to because, clarify your question? <laughs> they have some worldly things that happen in that catfish world. Lauren has so much experience in the world now. But but I, I agree with Amanda. I think that, you know, of course, anything that that's new that comes out is something that I'm definitely interested in. It's like the psycho valve, you know, when that came out. But I also think that anything that uh, new that comes out about Lauren's past, about uh, him growing up, uh, anything new about that stuff, uh, even though it's not contemporary, is still interesting to me. Yeah, I like what Anna Roke has just said in the um, chat. Um, he calls them out for not being real. So when they don't show up, he pats himself on the back. I told you so. I think I've I've, I've tried to figure out why, because Lon sees the red flags. He just kind of doesn't do anything about them, or it doesn't kind of it doesn't tally in his brain. I think that he he kind of he knows he's kind of potentially bullshit. But the way his logic works is, if they don't end up being real, it's because the their um, retards. He doesn't kind of understand that you have to take responsibility and go. Actually, yes, they may be, but one hell of that's one hell of a gamble, isn't it? So it's like, right, I'm going to go along with it, and it's their fault. If, and and if they end up being false, because what was really interesting in one yeah. of the calls, we're going way off topic here. Well, we're not going way off topic. We're talking about law, and it's just we're not talking about the document. But in one of the catfish calls, he said, "You sound just like Casey Moreau." That's a really fucking strange thing to say to somebody that you think is that person. I don't ring Adam up and go and say you you sound just like Adam. Like what, what the fuck? Do you know what I mean? It's it's like trying to convince himself. Yeah, yeah, it was a really odd way of saying it. It's like he at that moment he kind of it's like I'm I'm not he could hundred percent believe it. Well, it, it can't be hundred percent if he knew deni- undeniably. There's obviously, I think there's. It's like the the dumb and dumb dumber scenario. So you're telling me there's a chance. That's it. That's all he oh, needs. I have a rapist wit. <laughs> but, oh. Yeah, but every now and then when things don't go his way, that's when it happens. That's when he's triggered. You know, uh, it's not so much, uh, you know, a compilation of all these things that are unbelievable. You know, if they're if they're consistent with what makes him happy. He's he's fine to stay in that fantasy beat, fantasy beat. Once it gets overwhelmed with things that are so negative for him, he calls him on his shit. It's almost like he's saying, guys, you know, stick with the script. 
you know, don't, don't he you know, has don't said that you. before, Shin. He has said that before to yeah. I think he was talking to to Dan and he said, uh, you never answer the phone when I call nobody ever answers the phone when I call, but when everybody else calls, you all answer the phone right off. You're not yeah. being very discreet. You're not yeah. he was basically saying, You're not being very convincing. You right. need to do better to convince me that this is real. He's like the Which acting was, and he was director. drunk at the time. He's like the director actor in his little thing, you know. Um, you know when he he'll... starts to call it out is when after he has therapy or a meeting with probation, because they'll tally it up for him. The things that he doesn't want to put together, they'll say, "Okay, Lauren, they've got Google numbers. They're all connected to each other. Your shit keeps ending up on the internet. <laughs> Do the math. What are they doing to you?" Yeah, so but then when he he'll put... call the catfish. Yeah, but he doesn't do it. He doesn't. He doesn't call the catfish on it uh, to say you're full of shit. You're you're you know you're manipulating me. You're 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 not who you say you are. He does it uh, basically to say, hey, look, convince me that they're not true. Mm -hmm. That they're not what yeah. they're saying is not is not yep. correct. Look, convince Tell me, me what to say. This is the argument my probation officer. Yeah. yeah, and then it won't take much of an argument to keep them in. You know. Uh, so he's not he's not necessarily taking what probation uh, said to heart. He's looking for information he could bring back to probation and and uh, and counter their argument with. That's what he's doing. That's what it exactly. Seems like. Yeah, I agree with that. I do because you're right. It doesn't take anything to convince them. In fact, no. you don't even have to try. You just say, "Well, if you don't believe me, don't talk to me." Yeah, well, I yeah. believe you. I have cancer. I Would I lie to you? you? You know, boom, there we go. That's all you need. Mm. Mm. Yeah, I think I think the desperation thing is obviously something that we always say is kind of, you know, but I think there's more to it than that. I think that desperation equals total stupidity equals catfish. You know what I mean? I think that's, that's the situation. You could have somebody who's ridiculously desperate, but if they've got an ounce of, of intelligence... They won't get themselves into that situation. Um, it's yeah. We'll go into it. I've got a, a kind of another topic coming up soon when we get all the gang together, which we'll kind of go into that a bit more. Um, yes. Anyway, so um, let me know, guys, if the chat. I've got the chat in the top right on the screen. So if it, if it distracts you from reading it, just let me know and I'll try and move it. But um, so we've got all of this document. Um, <laughs> which I assume Long gave to one of the catfishes. <laughs> Actually, let's start, we didn't get a hold of it. It's in public domain. It's yeah, out it's, yeah, it's out yeah. there. It's yeah. not any kind of. It's not a kind of kind of kind of secret. We were talking about this the other day, weren't we, Amanda James? It was like, just think how much material this guy. You put the catfishing aside, right? And the even the legal documents, like it's just. I know we've spoke about this before, but. It's almost like he's, he's, he's a gift. It's the gift that keeps on giving. Like, do you just think a novel, lawsuits, probation reports, psyche vows, fucking... It just goes on and on. Poems, songs, workout, Poems, yeah. workout videos. Uh, it just goes like, his, what he, is it? He makes his job look so easy, doesn't he? <laughs> <laughs> It's, it's a pity that, like, he's crap at everything. Because, like, he'd make a fortune. He's kind of quite... I'm going to say... I'm not dynamic, but he... What's the word? Uh, Tiffany used the word. Charismatic. Here, but... charismatic no, he's not charismatic either. He's dull as dishwater, but... <sighs> Resource... Stupid. <laughs> well, that's certainly one word. But Stupid what... enough to think he can write novels or <laughs> songs. And, and profit off them. I call it stupid, not resourceful. <laughs> you give them too much credit. No, but th that's not the word resourceful wasn't what I'm looking for. Somebody who does a lot of different things, like he... Ambitious? No, he's not even... <sighs> no. He, he does <laughs> have... He's shit at all of them. Yeah, he's crap at them all, but he kind of like... <sighs> he, he, he does a bit of everything, doesn't he? He's like the jack of all trades, master of none. We'll call we'd call him over here, because um, you know, poet, songwriter, construction worker, um, 
lawyer, his, his own school. lawyer, yeah, yeah chef, yeah, right. personal trainer, um, model. See, he likes doing stick. modeling photos. Um, I'm gonna I'm stick with stupid because he thought he could do a fitness video. Oh, give him a break, Amanda James. I'm sick all, of I you won't. bloody having a go at the guy. I'm trying to. I won't give him a break. Olympic, he Olympic gymnast on his front yard. You know, so right. That's... A, a chef, he can do cooking videos. He knows nothing about cooking. He heated up some porkless bites in the oven and made a fucking video. But he chopped up some lettuce and called it his vegan salad. He sucks at everything. He's so dumb that he thinks he can instruct other people how to do things that he does not know how to do. Hello, everyone. <laughs> Wasn't he talking about the workout video in one of the recent catfish calls? He got, like, Casey to watch it or something. <laughs> like, his workout. You think I'm fat? Check out my workout video. <laughs> it's like you were fat, Lon. <laughs> it's offensive. The nerve of making a workout video when you smoke three packs of cigarettes a day and don't know how to use a shake weight. But like, and you're well, gonna tell well, other well, well, people. Wait a minute, who who incorporates a shake away anyway? I mean, I <laughs> I've never seen one in a gym. I I, you know, that alone uh, is funny. It's hilarious. Do you know? It is. Like when I had, I won't go into this too. When I had like a, a, a um, a, how can I put it? An experience of consciousness, shall we say, through various means. You you get a sense that the world that we live in isn't as real as what you think it is. <laughs> And nothing could make me believe that more than Lorne's shake weight clip. The, the, just think about a sex offender doing that kind of movement on a YouTube video. It just doesn't make it's like, how are we living in a world where that happens? It's just and, so and crazy. The way he was dressed, the way he was dressed, it was just hilarious. Like, All he needed was a bandana. It would been great. <laughs> it's, so, it's just so funny. It's, <laughs> oh my god it's, and it, there's a couple of crackers in this bit in this document as well we'll get to that soon I best, I think we better crack on anyway yeah um, uh, right okay so this is we've skipped over a lot of the legal jargon and we've got right to it so um, just so everybody knows uh, the legal jargon jargon dealt with is the crime and the and the and the, and the level of you know on the on the guidelines all pretty boring shit what we consider to be interesting is this stuff where probation did a an investigation. Uh, in other words, we all know what a reliable reporter Lauren is, right? But they actually talked to people, talked to his employers, talked to his family, talked to everything. So they got the real, talked to his high school, real information. And so when we hear all of these things about Lauren being rich and everybody taking advantage of him or you know, uh, uh, him having all these uh, high-end jobs and, and uh, whatnot. This is the document that, that would hold his feet to the fire. This is the this is the gold standard truth. This is what probation was able to find out. And I, I find this fascinating uh, when you juxtaposition this against what he, uh, you know, how he uh, how he holds himself out. So. Yeah, because basically we're getting an official stamp on a lot of the things that we have learned about Lorne. Um, some of the most famous aspects of his makeup, if you will, is, is contained within this document, and we'll go over that when we go over it. Um, but yeah, Shin said, it's nice to see it verified. Um, so we'll we'll start at the top here. So the defendant was born to the union of Ralph Armstrong Sr. and Gwendolyn Armstrong Cooley. Was that a, a maiden name? Yeah. Right, yeah. that's interesting. I've never read mm-hmm. that. You see, the first sentence, I've just learned something that I never knew before, that yeah. if, you know... Mary, Lon, it, imagine if she didn't get married. It Lon Lon could have, yeah, I was just going to say, Long could have been called Lon Cooley, which is a real cool name. Cool, like... Like Mel Cooley. Mel Cooley was the, uh, was the producer in Dick Man Dick show that was bald, and they were always making uh, bald jokes about, so that would be perfect. Yeah, Lon Cooley. Hmm, interesting. He is the youngest... Of six children, born to his parents, we will... Uh, the baby of the family. Yeah, we, we kind of, we've talked about that a lot. Uh, we will not dwell on it too much here, but um, the kind of psychological effects that that will have had on Lorne, we can, I'd like to discuss in more detail at some point. Excuse me. Uh, the defendant advised he'd lived in Scoegan, Maine, 
we 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 have done we we went on a little road trip, Shane, didn't we? And what what yes. what, what a road trip that was as well. Um or that intermediate area until he was nineteen or twenty. He reported then um he reported he enlist then enlisted in the US Air Force and was stationed at um Anchorage. Where's that? Mm. Alaska. It fucking tells Alaska. you if I just read on. Um, from 91 to 93. After he left the Air Force, the defendant revealed he moved back and forth from Maine to Washington several times from 94 to 2001, at which time... So when it says here he moved back and forth from Maine to Washington, didn't he say he moved to Washington for Amanda James? No, oh. the other way around. He came back from Washington to the East Coast to go to Maine uh, because Amanda lived in Pennsylvania, uh, which was still about 700 miles away. <laughs> so why? But, that's what he told and, Chris, though, wasn't it? Uh, well, he just told Chris that he, he was used by someone. He was manipulated by someone on the Internet. Yeah, that, no, uh, but I thought he said he moved because of her. Come on, Amanda James, well, back me up here. Too- yeah, no, I think you're right. He said he moved back to Maine from Washington to be closer right. to Amanda James. To be closer to someone he'd never met. That does sound like something Lorne would do, actually. Yes, 100%. It, it, it also begs the question in the community, why didn't he stop in Pennsylvania on his way to Maine? You know, to, to try to find her. <laughs> yeah, and love- someone just bring up an interesting point. How often did he fly? So, in other words, back and forth, how many times did he flip between Maine and Washington? Right. Well, uh, between ninety four and two thousand and one, forgive my ignorance of um, American geography, but how far is Maine from Washington? You said what seven eight hundred miles? As far as you can get, oh, is it really? It's on the other side of the country. Like yeah. wow. miles. But here's the thing, though we're 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 you know we're buying into his his reasoning for moving back to Maine. I don't believe it was just. Oh, no, I'm just. Oh, not at all. I'm just interested into what he said, like because he said yeah. he moved. He moved because of Amanda James, which is really interesting because that would have been the first time that we're aware of that he got catfished and he happened to move thousands of miles because of it. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, exactly. (laughs) And he didn't learn his lesson, did he, Amanda James? Of course not. He probably moved back to Maine from Washington for financial reasons. I I had to guess. Yeah, avoid avoid his creditors. He fucked some people over, yeah, and he had to go back to Maine, where his family is, to help him with a place to live. You always which... have to think the worst of him, don't you? Every he single does, it's true. time. He told us he built a shack in his sister's driveway to live in. Right, and and That's... then she, um, the story goes that she, then she hooked up with this guy, and they decided they didn't want him on the property anymore. There's got to be so much more to that. There's got to be. You know, he makes I don't blame her. Even if it was just that, I don't want a shack in my driveway with my brother living in it. <laughs> then he was forced to buy Ralph's house. You know, <laughs> I, I going try, trying to break down those those uh, those financial details of what he was doing is is just impossible. It's ridiculous. Mm. Um. In 2007, the defendant advised he relocated to Nashville, Tennessee to pursue his singing career. Oh, my <laughs> God. He actually told them, just think, right, he was sat across from somebody or at least provided some kind of report between him and his team, league, you know, his solicitor, his lawyer, or whatever, and he had to tell somebody of authority, I moved to Nashville to pursue my singing career. Yeah, yeah. It's like, it's... it's uh... It's it's a stretch to even call that the truth, you know. <laughs> it really is. I, I mean, uh, because you would think that maybe part of the reason, but it's interesting that there's no mention of Betty in this thing. There's, you know, it's not interesting at all. It's quite. Uh, why would there be? Yeah. That's why he it's left. Such you know? a lie, right? He moved to Nashville to escape from his responsibility of paying Betty back. No, that's what it was. Or but or. It- he didn't get his mac and cheese, meatballs, and deviled eggs, which he he didn't tell the uh, tell the investigator this. He should have he should have told that story. Oh, I re- I reckon the it'll be hinted at. Me. He, 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 he recited that story to Casey as well, word for word. 
Yeah, I think like, they've all heard it word for word. But I think Never he had a realization that it sounds ridiculous when you told that story. Or his feelings, uh, you know, his emotions involved were ridiculous. I think he kind of, but he, he still says the story anyway. If he really moved to Nashville to pursue his lifelong dream of becoming a country singer, that's another example of, of his stupidity and his laziness and thinking that that is the avenue to get to that goal is to just go to karaoke bars, get drunk and sing and hope that he impresses somebody. I mean, I don't know what you would do to, to get well, you, 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 First of all, you do recognize. some You'd bring, you do some recordings, right? I would assume. You I would get, assume. I mean, you gotta meet the right people and, and go yeah. to, I don't know. Well, send find, it to the right people, you know. Right. Find these people, these producers or whatever the fuck you have to do. I don't know. I'm not trying to be a country star. But I would, I as a grown person would think to myself, hmm, getting drunk and scream singing in a bar isn't, isn't gonna, you know, turn me into a celebrity there, there's got to be a lot more work that goes into it than that but lauren thinks he's his vision of himself is so deluded that he thought that all he had to do was open his mouth and start screaming and somebody would come find him just like he thought all he had to do was take his little jail pencil to the paper and start writing bullshit and he would be able to write a successful novel that would make him money yeah. And he does that over and over again. I think Reborn was talking on stream about how Jamie the robot wanted a very expensive wedding. And Lauren's solution to be able to, to come up with the money for this wedding was to write songs and then people would buy them. Like celebrities <laughs> would buy them. For the, to pay for the wedding? Yeah, that was how he was going to come up with the money. They needed something like a quarter of a million dollars for the wedding that she wanted. And his plan was, no, don't worry. Don't worry. I'm going to write songs. Somebody's going to find them and and offer me hundreds of thousands of dollars for them. I think it's um, indicative of somebody who's got no direction in life. If you think about it right... And with the thing is, I've been in situations like that, not where I've moved thousands of miles to pursue a singing career by singing karaoke, but what I mean is, um, you know, being directionless. And at that point, if you think about his life situation there, he's scammed an old couple. He'll have already played the victim mentality scenario in his head repeatedly to absolve himself of any personal shame or guilt. So that'll be fine. So... He, what does he think in his brain? Right, what do I want to do? I want to be a singer. Right, I'll move to Nashville. That's it. And it's like, he hasn't thought, right, what's the most logical thing for me to do in this scenario now? Where's the most logical place to go? Right, what kind of work can I do? Driving or whatever he's done before or septic, whatever. I know, I'll go to a, st a state where that I've got more chance of getting hired. No, I'm going to go to Nashville to pursue singing he's not even thought about how he's going to go about it you know if you want to do it learn an instrument get singing lessons get yourself in shape none of that what does he do when he gets there goes online talking to kayla <laughs> and tells kayla that he's going to be a, he's going to be a, like famous will you come to my concert <laughs> it's so funny when, he, when he's not talking to her he's pining after her He's waiting on the computer for her. You know, he's sending off lines. He, he's, he's the, just a perfect example of a rudderless entity floating through life, kind of, well, a, a, a sinister entity as well, I may add. Um, um, upon his release from custody, the defendant indicated he would return to Maine. Now, the only reason I would say that is is because he's got nobody else to leech off, so of course he's going to go back to Maine. Right. So that's pretty obvious, really. Um, <clears throat> okay, so, on the 11th of April 2008, U.S. probation officer from the District of Maine conducted a home visit with the defendant's yeah. mother, Gwendolyn, at her residence located in Scoegan, Maine. They noticed she resides in a one-bedroom home, but the defendant and his brother have began building an additional addition onto the house, which can oh, be made geez. into the bedroom. I 
would bet that that's still being constructed. Um, or is half finished and has stayed that way? Well, they started with the closet. Right. Um, Mrs. Armstrong advised the defendant intends to reside with her upon his release from custody. The investigating officer noted his office would have no issue assuming supervision of the defendant upon his release from custody. Right, okay. Um, oh, here we get to, might get to some interesting, um, well, anyway, we'll get, we'll get to it. Um, when asked about his upbringing, the defendant reported his parents separated uh, when he was approximately two years old. He indicated his mother met a man called Dale um, when he was three years old. He described Dale as the only real father he knew growing up. Hmm. When the two families combined, the defendant advised they had to move to a bigger home. He indicated his mother and Dale... Uh, remained in a relationship for almost 30 years, but the relationship deteriorated when he cheated on his mother. Didn't he uh, cheat on his mother with... Um... There's it right there, his ex-sister-in-law. Oh, with really? <laughs> oh, really? I'm really going to have to start reading ahead. The thing is, if you didn't know, these kind of scenarios happen in, in these kind of dysfunctional families where you just scratch your head at thinking of the... Um, it's like, hang on a minute. The, the, the mother's... The mother's partner got off with the child's like and you're just thinking hang on a minute it's like one of those god rest his soul jerry springer type scenarios isn't it mm. you could just see yeah. it like at the bottom of the screen couldn't you i my mum got into a relationship with my brother's fiance you know all this kind of stuff um yeah it's you know what i said earlier i'd like to do a stream at some point and we could just have a talk about how i think his upbringing has shaped him um to some degree because there's kind of i really think it's significant um the fact that dale was the was his male was the male role model for him you know you had this stepfather you probably didn't like him i mean does it did he ever talk how did he because i've not listened to as much of the stuff as uh you guys i don't think uh how does he reminisce about dale What's the emotions attached to it? Dale, he said, basically just worked. They didn't have an emotional sort of bond. <clears throat> you know, he wasn't sitting on Dale's lap as a little boy and playing ball in the yard, <clears throat> according to Lauren. It was more just like Dale was Mama Gwen's boyfriend and he helped pay the bills and, and do that side of stuff. He brought plumbing he to their lives, didn't he? Indoor plumbing to their lives. Yeah, yeah, he said something about that. Like, oh, we had to go to the well. We might have, I can't remember, but I think we did. <laughs> Dale got the plumbing hooked up. Like but every, like every time he water. complains it's about Dale. Water. Yeah. I, the thing that, I, that strikes me about Dale, at least I'm looking at it from Lauren's perspective. You know, I, I could kind of, you know, put together some kind of a profile of, of Dale on my own, but from Lauren's perspective, the big things that I remember, number one, him and his mother didn't sleep in the same room, and number mm -hmm. two, Dale never took the time to teach him about sexual positions. Those are, those are the two things I remember about Dale. Yeah, Dale didn't have sex with his mom, and that was disappointing, and Dale didn't teach him how to have sex, and that was disappointing, and Dale was barely even a pervert. There was only one porno magazine in their house growing up which right. was also very disappointing for some reason who was on it it was somebody who was featured on that i can't remember who it was was it i don't remember <laughs> or something like that? I can't oh remember. um somebody from one of those old shows somebody from the waltons maybe oh yeah 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 yeah, yeah. that's right uh <laughs> betty lou or whatever i can't remember i don't know it's so funny that he remembers he that to jerk it off to in the house. He's just, six boys <clears throat> that, that 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 magazine must have got some use man what's uh really interesting here is the defendant described his childhood as good which is good well it's not if you want long to suffer eternal you know misery but you know it's it's I suppose for me, I'm kind of a bit, you would 
think that somebody who does such terrible things has got like, um, you know, such a speckled past. But of course, in other ways, he certainly has. Um, well, he'll you, he'll say his childhood was good, but then when it is convenient for him, he'll say that it was also traumatic. Yeah, he reparented yeah. himself and all that bullshit. Yeah, I'm not sure how it can be both good and traumatic. I mean, I understand people have good and bad things happen to them. But he go lately, like in the newest Casey stuff, he talks a lot about the trauma he endured in his childhood. So it's interesting how he describes it as good when all these terrible things happened. Mm. Um, this is pretty funny. The defendant described, oh, sorry, he reported he has difficulty with people leaving him in quotation marks, which is, which means, is it like with the people writing this sick of him fucking saying that? Like, quote unquote, and people leaving came, him. It, and he diagnosed where it came from. It can't be that he's, he's the most repulsive, vile person in the world that people don't want to be around, but he's he says it's from his biological father leaving when he was two years old. He, and and he, t he says in another call that he doesn't recall, have any memory of his father, you know, uh, leaving or whatnot. And he immediately munkled on to his oldest brother for a father figure or something. I don't remember what it was. So I think uh, you, you got to remember, this is like pre-catfishing, apart from Kayla, of course. Um, I suppose you could throw Amanda James in there, but... Like his kind of neediness and this that we see repeatedly in the catfishing where he's so like clingy and will you fucking marry me? All that kind of stuff. He's so insecure and it's like he's trying to like explain, he's trying to rationalize that here, isn't he? That it's his dad's fault. Which, you know, there may be some truth in that. You've got to like... I, that's what I believe. I believe he, he might have hit on something inadvertently the truth. Yeah, you know, that he, I, I, I think that you've got to remember, Lon's still a human being, as much as we don't want to admit it sometimes. These things will have affected him. There are, everybody's got scars from the childhood. Everybody. Everybody's got, something went wrong at some point. It's in the nature of being a person. So, and the, there are, there is, without a doubt, new neuroses that Lon's got, like, to some degree, quite severe ones that we can... Not quite as blatant as what I would have thought from the chat log, but, you know, he's capable of um, the most basic of tasks as a human. Um, but anything that gets a bit complicated, he kind of doesn't. I believe, I believe he does have separation anxiety, but I don't think it's a result of his father. I, I think it's a result of all of his life experiences and people leaving him everywhere. And him not understanding why. But he's bringing this back to his father because he doesn't want to sully his, uh, uh, you know, the reporter's perception of him as being unpopular. You know, I, I think that's where his, his uh, separation anxiety comes from. Well, I mean, I was, I posted, um, I did a video on the effect of potentially Lawn's father leaving him. And I, I hope people don't get fucking triggered in the comments. But there was a set, there was a bit I read about that Jordan Peterson said about how if a uh, if a father rejects the child, it's like the spirit of civilization has left you. It can be so damaging to that child, especially if he's the youngest as well and he needs the most... You know, it's happened. The others have had time to kind of... They're a little bit older. I mean, we don't know. This is just theorizing. Well, it's, here's the thing about Lauren. If you look at his life, the objective facts, and even what he says, his childhood wasn't bad. I mean, compare it to some people who had real traumatic childhoods, uh, tra uh, people who were physically, emotionally, sexually abused, people who were neglected, people who, uh, you know, had near-death experience, I mean, really bad situations. Lauren had a blessed life to a certain extent, much better than he deserved. I mean, I know you we're talking about Lauren as a kid, but he must have been a pain in the ass kid too. So, <laughs> so but I think that, <laughs> I'm going. I'm going on with. I agree uh, with Reborn and a few others who say I don't think he was ever disciplined, and you know that's a charmed life for a kid. So you know, aside from, uh, you know, what does he do with his time? He sells uh, sells meat in the woods, rotten wood. I don't. 
understand why it's rotten, but you know, he, he, that's that's how he, I think he was just always lonely because nobody wanted to be around him because he was yeah. he was such a piece of mm. shit mm. Uh, his whole life. <clears throat> <laughs> yeah. So, so Chin's theory was just was born an asshole. Tired. Well, yeah, he he did not have. Uh, I don't believe this is. I mean, if you put uh, traumatic childhoods on a scale, of one to ten, I, I think he would. You know, based on the objective facts and even the worst case scenarios that he's trying to portray, I don't think that's more than a two or a three. Yeah, I think b- by the time Lauren came around, his mother was tired. She had a ton of kids. They were, according to Lauren, they were, you know, troublemakers and in all kinds of shit. She was doing it on her own because although she had Dale there, I don't think he was really much of a parental oh, can figure. Can you have to deal with him as a stepkid? Jesus. No, I, no, I don't, yeah, I don't blame Dale Dale's for being like that. <laughs> Isn't it great? Long, long baby lawns getting shit off of us. It's like, baby oh, lawn. <laughs> Even then, even then. Oh, the hatred, the hatred just flows through this one. Well, I think I, I do. I think he did not get enough attention growing up. Like you said, should nobody wanted to be around him. His mother said, "Go play in the woods, lawn. Go sell your rotten wood. Get the fuck out of here." She's been Can you imagine doing walking through the woods one day as a as a as a hiker and you seeing some kids like uh, selling have a meat store trying to sell me meat. nowhere. <laughs> trying to sell me meat. <laughs> Children of the corn thing going on. What the fuck is that? Oh god, that's scary. Yeah, that's why he idolized his siblings. That's why he latched on so hard to his siblings and munkled onto his sister's leg and has fond memories of her picking bugs out of his hair. He has always been very desperate for attention. I, he he didn't get it when he was a kid. And no. this is the consequence, I guess. And and I believe needy... it was justified. I believe he was a real annoying little brat. I I believe that. <laughs> Well, he said I believe, that I believe he... he was a kid who ran around naked all the time. I believe. Uh, I believe <laughs> you think that. that's where he uh, stayed. Appropriate time. I think really. he was trying to sit on his brother's lap when he was like 11 years old, trying, you know, yeah. munkling, yeah. like he said. But Wanting to push it's his like you said, bear. Shin. <laughs> right, just being creepy, <laughs> being a creepy kid. Yeah, he's just but nobody wanted. There's a reason why he doesn't have friends, even as a kid. There's a reason why he was probably bullied to death because. Again, not necessarily for something, you know, for just being who he is, probably because he, he put himself out there like that all the time. Um, you know, he was just an annoying pest. I, I bet his teachers hated him. Well, it's like you said, Shin, he, when he was talking to Casey, he was talking about how he put his older brother into the father, the, you know, the the parental role for himself. And his brother right. was two, um, nine. Yeah. <laughs> nine years old. So he put way too much yeah, responsibility on his siblings. And he would cry about, oh, they left me. My siblings left me. They're they not your parents. Cry. You cry, baby bitch. <laughs> uh, okay. So, but okay. he's not going to blame his mother. Out. He'll never blame his mother and say, she didn't give me enough attention. She had too many children. She didn't, you know, give me the emotional um care that i needed instead he'll blame his dad or dale he'll blame dale who was you know just a a stepfather yeah who did his job i mean he provided a a home for them he helped with money and all that stuff but then he'll go on about reparenting himself but talk about how, how his mother is a saint yeah yeah i mean he's he's he cannot he has no credibility when he's talking about his life. None whatsoever. That's why this do- a document like this is important. Yeah, um, I, I it agree. Talks, it, it talks about, he taught, you know, it taught, it recounts what he's telling them at the same time they're doing an investigation to it at the same time. So. Um, well, it's, his relationship with his mother has always been really interesting to me. And the way he has this sort of um, exaggerated, like, faux uh, best best friend you know his mother's the light of his life really we know that's bullshit we know that's all made up and when it comes down to it and his mother needs something he doesn't really give a shit you know he'll spend mother's day getting drunk and crying about a man with one testicle rather than hanging you know spending it with his mom but he wants the he wants that relationship he just doesn't want to put in the work to build it but 
that's what Lauren wants more than anything is just love. He wants to be special to someone. He wants he, to well, have, that's why he insisted. Never, have you ever heard his mother say, I love you? I'm just curious. No, I haven't. Well, I, I think the only thing value his mother has to him is a, is, a, is, is money. And I, I believe that that's, you know, he, he does his feign, he feigns this concern about, you know, Roy being over there and drunk all the time and not being good. He's trying to get Roy to, you know, trying to fuck up Roy's life, you know, basically. And, and, and her, his mom wants Roy there on top of that, you know, and, and so I think I, he's jealous. I, well, I think he's, he's jealous of Roy's getting material things that he could get or that he might be in better stead in the, in the event that she dies and, and he gets left, you know, something that Lauren mm -hmm. deserves. That's his only reason. That's his only reason for helping his mother um, to preserve his own interests. That's it. You took, you said something then that was, um, that piqued me interest then, Shin, is that um, Gwendolyn might have never said, I love you to Lauren. Uh, sorry, we've never heard it. I'm thinking, just hear me out, Lon may have never have been told by anybody that they love him. No yeah. one might, n no one might have ever uttered that to him. Yeah, but, yeah, I don't think they ever kissed him. I don't think they hugged him that much. You, you know how when you were a kid and you know an adult came over and gave you a sloppy kiss and you hated it. Lauren probably desired that so much. He probably wanted that so much, but people realize once they kissed him once, I'm not going to kiss this little. That would explain <laughs> is is like almost cartoon like desperation. The fact that we, um, you know, like the the Winnie thing. Like I've heard more snippets of the last few months than I've ever heard, and the scenarios that were going down there, and how repulsive that character was. You know, I know she shit herself, but she's a special lady. <laughs> it's like that. Just, like what, dude? Like it's just remarkable that this. And he just it still baffles me now. It's like when Case is trying to get it out of him. Why do you fall in love with it? Or say you're in love with these people, and it's not real, and they don't give you any attention. And it's like he's so, so desperate for some kind of positive reinforcement anything there's no alternative there's none winnie was the only one who told him that she loved him and even i think jamie asked him who his best relationship was with and he said winnie and this wasn't was you know too long ago yeah he said winnie was the best one and i think that's the reason why because she's the one who said she loved him half the time she was even saying though, him, though. i know but he didn't know that he's an idiot but she arguably could be the worst relationship he's so. ever had. She was horrible. Interesting. Um, the defendant revealed he was taught to be honest. Well, that didn't work very well, did it? He added it was also... Uh, it, had, it has also been very important for him to think highly of him. What? He added yes. it has also yes. been very important for... But oh, for him to, to him for people to think highly of him, um, yes. which must be a real pain in the ass when you're labelled a sex offender. That must really mm. do that some damage. You kind of fuck yeah, that, aren't you, for the rest of your life? Around. Yeah, there's no, there's no getting mm -hmm. around that. Um, the defendant added he longed for more affection as a child and indicates he did not feel he was given much attention from his mother until her relationship with Mr. with Dale ended. That's quite when interesting because um, yeah, because you said Amanda James that um, he wouldn't ever. I mean, is that could we consider that a criticism? Oh, uh, of his mother. Yeah. No, I think I think that coming from him is a criticism of Dale. Dale took up his mother's time and, and affection. Yeah. yeah. It's his fault. Yeah. Right. Um, um, the defendant's father. Um, oh, uh, as um, I, I don't know that we're allowed to say this. Uh, I'm sure it's been mentioned before, but... Um, Lon's father is no longer with us, is he? No. Right. Right. When did that happen? Oh, that was... Rem during the I don't know. Saga, I think. It, Early yeah. 
I remember him mentioning it to Ramona that he died. Ah, I right, think okay. I don't know when. A long time ago then. Right. Wow. Um. Okay. The defendant's father, Ralph. Uh, lives in for did uh, and we still support we don't need to read about that he advises his mother resides in Skowhegan blah blah blah, blah. Yeah, these Advise... are all these are just, yeah just his brothers and siblings and stuff we yeah really... we, yeah we don't really need to um, go into that defendant has never been married and does not have any children thank god um, physical condition defendant is 5 yes. foot 8 weighs 176 oh, pounds he is not huh <laughs> no go ahead we're just we're just we're just heckling you uh, well <laughs> I don't know like I stood pretty much face to face with him in court, and uh, I'm a bit of a short ass. I'm only five foot eight, and I think he was, he was probably half an inch shorter than me. Well, well he went to the doctor on the phone with the robot, I believe, and they they took his height there, and he was wearing his shoes, and they, I mean, it's not really a big deal. I don't know, but. They said he was five seven with shoes on. Right. So. Okay. They asked him to take him off, and he wouldn't. They did. <laughs> yeah. He wouldn't. Yeah, Andrew. He's. I. I. I think he's maybe barely five six. Right. Lot <laughs> 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 like Shin's taking an inch, another inch off him. So it wasn't enough that the doctor said he was five foot seven. It's like let's took, let's take another one on. off him. Your shoes give you a about an inch. Your shoes don't give you a fucking inch. Not like yeah, David yeah, Brent style. <laughs> I wrote the registry. You don't see shoes like them anymore. You can still find them. A, a few years back, I wrote the registry saying, listen, you can't put 5'8 up here. <laughs> I'm identifying him. You know, people are going to expect to see a, a taller guy. And they wrote back saying, well, it's not really up to us to verify that stuff. You know, he, it's really whatever he tells them it is. So they don't even mm -hmm. verify that stuff. They're accusing me. They're accusing me of being five foot six now in the chat because he looked only half an inch shorter than me. <laughs> oh, I've dropped myself in it here. Um, I'm gonna. I'm gonna edit that part out. Um, what about his weight? Maybe he weighed 176 pounds back then. Maybe. He was. Um, he was a bit tubby. He wasn't. Uh, he. He wasn't what you would consider fat. But from the sting footage. He had a he had a little bit of a, a little bit of a mid region, but nothing too excessive. I think that could be mm. roundabout accurate. Yeah. Um, I think if we need to if we need to find out his height using an objective measurement, we should go to the sting house, measure the exact width of the of this front stoop where he just fit perfectly in. <laughs> <laughs> yes, exactly. I just got that picture in my head of him, him laying face down with his hat knocked off. Yeah, do you know what? I was just thinking, wouldn't it be cool if we had like infinite time and infinite money because this would be a ridiculously ridiculous indulgent trip, but go into the exact spot where he was like face down on the floor and his hat <laughs> fell off and the guns are pointed at him. Absolutely. Me and you could make some photos like we did when we did that shake weight video shit. <laughs> Yeah, like we dress up, that. we could reenact yeah. it exactly. I'd be folded up in that stoop, though. I wouldn't be able to fit. Yeah, yeah Stan's not gonna fit. But... <laughs> oh my god, that'd be amazing. Because we could I obviously could wear the same outfit, <laughs> wear the same clothes we're not wearing. He makes a swift exit. <laughs> <laughs> I want my hat falling off, and then I'm gonna, I'm gonna really commit to the role by shaving my head. <laughs> I'm, and I better off doing that. <laughs> you can, you can play Chris oh, Hansen. I'll tight. play Lawn. We have to add tight here. <laughs> oh my God! Can you believe it? Right? How many times have we watched that sting footage, and we're still laughing about it? <laughs> that was one of my favorite videos of yours. Uh, before we started streaming together, uh, the outdoor footage, you, you laugh the entire time. Do you know, <laughs> it's funny. Whenever, when people like um, tell me what their favorite video of mine is, it's always the ones where I'm just laughing. It's like, yeah. is that is that the extent of my like um, broadcasting talents? Just laughing. <laughs> people just think <laughs> it's funny. <laughs> but yeah, I remember that one. But it's what I love about that is it's so symbolic how his hat fell off, like it's the last lingering thread of his dignity. 
he's on the floor. It's just, it's it's <laughs> like he's being, it's it's so, I understand that it's like, was turned into the Church of God. He's literally being crucified at that minute. You know, the guns <laughs> are on him. His hat has fell off. Everything, what it's what, it's one of the most remarkable aspects of his story is that moment that's, where it all Tiffany's, ended. <laughs> Tiffany was most attracted at that moment to him. <laughs> yeah, she loves that. Yeah, I like she his that part. wailing and that whimpering. Part. Well, when the hat fell off, when the hat fell off, she loves that part. <laughs> We could we could do like streams and even a series just on that two second segment. It's it's just remarkable. It really is. Um, right. Okay. Do you know? I just read the next part and it said the defendant advised he broke. I thought it said the defendant advised he was broke, but no, it's talking about his um, physical condition. Uh, the defendant advised he broke his right arm while he was in the military and that his wrist was not reset correctly. I didn't know that. Has he talked about that before? Well, no, that's his own medical diagnosis. He doesn't know what the fuck he's Oh, talking. right, okay. Because, yeah, it's going to interrupt in his masturbating because it's just here. You've got to you've got to accept the fact that some of this stuff is coming from Lauren. You've got to sit through it and figure out what is Lauren and what is affected here. I, I don't think they went ahead and got his medical records to find out it was medical malpractice. That's Lauren. <laughs> there's, so, there's so many fucking jokes you could fit into this. As a result, he reported his, his hand, his right hand goes numb. Right, because it, oh yeah, that's that's why it goes number yeah. one. It's not because you were <laughs> masturbating to fucking Kayla on the fucking chat log, you dirty bastard. It is his right arm. So um, <laughs> the defendant indicated he has not requested any medical treatment for this condition. Well, that's fucking entirely suspicious. Um, oh right, okay, this is interesting. According to the medical information provided by the Warren County Regional Jail. On February 17th, 2008, the defendant was seen by medical personnel. The medical notes indicate the defendant was crying. <laughs> <laughs> is that all the medical notes, the first thing he says? <laughs> well, I suppose this is med- mental and emo- emotional health. Crying and reported he did not belong in jail. <laughs> oh, my God. So love it, love it, love it. Love I shouldn't be here. <laughs> I only have an OUI on my record. <laughs> he did not belong in jail. It's so funny that like someone will just, just say, I don't belong here. It's not my fault. I unintentionally traveled there. Shut up. Oh, wow. Um, the defendant revealed he was... <laughs> here we go. <laughs> 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 what part are you laughing at? The defendant, the defendant revealed. revealed. You want me to do it? Are yeah, you okay? I can't do it. Okay. The defendant revealed he was lured into the situation because oh. he was vulnerable. He also declared he was not in his right frame of mind and indicated he could not understand why he had acted the way he had. It was also noted the defendant advised he has problems in the past with his family members taking advantage of him. Medical staff left a message for the defendant to be seen by a psychology nurse, and the defendant agreed to take Ellaville in the interim. There we have it. I said he'd he'd point to the uh, mac and cheese story at some point, and there it is. I bet he told the whole story, and they just summarized and said, okay, he says he was taken advantage of because they... They didn't want to go through the trouble of writing down the ridiculous story about the mac and cheese, the meatballs, the double dog. I think that I think that he filled in that part while he was in jail, trying to think of the worst things his family members could do to him. That's what he came up with. I think he would have put it here because to show they would have wrote it down if he said that to show what what his emotional state was really like, how fucked up he was. I think he just says that about the money thing. And you got to remember, we, we, there's so many theories about this, but I believe he did give away a lot of Betty's money. And I think that he couldn't get that back. And that's what he's that's what he's referring to. But I think it took him five years sitting in jail to think of the mac and cheese, meatball, and deviled eggs uh, you know, uh, scenarios that he's talking about. Otherwise, he would have built that, I think. Well, 
he told Kayla that his family took advantage of him and used him, but he didn't give her the story about the food items. So maybe you're right. Maybe he compiled it all while he was in He had a lot of time on his hands. Mm-hmm. Well, that would have, that story would have taken quite a lot of typing, and he couldn't go that long without showing him showing his disc or ask, asking how anxious she was to touch his penis. So that's probably why he didn't divulge that story. But it's just it's so funny that you see it written down in so many different ways, and he says it in, to so many different people and uses it as an excuse so many times that he was vulnerable, and he just can't quite get that vulnerable people don't prey on children. You know, it's he, he, yeah. he can't, he just can't or won't make that connection that's like, right, okay, everybody can tell a story that they've been taken advantage of. Every single person who is of age, who has not lived in a basement all their life can point to when they were de- betrayed by somebody, taken advantage of by people that were close to them, you know, and, and didn't resort to, you know, jumping online and committing child molestation or attempted yeah he's saying i i was taken advantage of by people that i trusted therefore i was vulnerable so i in turn decided to take advantage of a vulnerable person who would put me in a position of trust right that's what chris asked and i guess yeah yeah but it's like saying ted bundy was vulnerable was so vulnerable <laughs> Yeah, it wouldn't wash that, would it? You know what I mean? You wouldn't. Um, it wouldn't hold up in court that one. You had all these people who was lawyers trying to come up with mitigation when the sentencing was passed. They wouldn't even go down that road. Can you imagine his lawyers noting that to the judge about the story? The, you know, the Mac and I, I think, story. I think, I think the mitigation argument would have been easy in court. I, I, unfortunately, you couldn't put it in a brief. I would just say to the court, "Look at him. Come on, look at this guy." <laughs> Seriously, imagine living in his shoes. <laughs> Oh, I'm sold already, to be fair. I'd let him off. Um, well, no, I wouldn't, but you get the point. Um, blah, 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 blah. Right, okay. February 18, 2008, the defendant was seen by a psychology nurse. The defendant denied any thoughts of self-harm, but admitted to feeling very emotional and upset. Good. He also advised he uh, had also learned a relative had passed away a few days earlier that all his family resided in Maine and he was felt very lonesome. The defendant also expressed concerns about his legal matters at the time. Mm, well, of course he he has. He's fucking getting that, that down. Be the list, right? <laughs> Who's the family member who died? Anybody know? His uncle, maybe. I don't know. Actually, maybe not. Okay. Hmm. Uh, right. Um, nothing. He's on Prozac, twenty milligrams. That's the lowest dose you can take. I think. I don't think he was on that for very long. Uh, the Tenet reports he believes the medication is beneficial. Okay. Uh, substance abuse. Right, we might as well go over this bit. Uh, can you see that, Amanda James? I want a bit of a break from reading it. Yeah, yeah I can see it. <clears throat> yeah. The defendant reported he began consuming alcoholic beverages when he was 20 years old. He reported he last drank alcohol a couple of days prior to his arrest on October 18th, 2007. The defendant described himself as someone who drank socially and indicated Budweiser Light was his drink of choice. The defendant indicated he typically drank beer on the weekends and would drink to the point of intoxication if he was upset. He expressed he believes he has a borderline problem with his consumption of alcohol and that he feels he would benefit from treatment for alcohol abuse. The defendant denied any history of blackouts due to alcohol consumption. He further denied any history of drug abuse. No drugs. Okay. Didn't believe in him. The the good one's coming up. Uh, oh, yeah. Everybody's asking. Okay, right here we go. So I I why. think um, one of you guys is going to have to read this one out and gives it the uh, the attention it deserves. Shin, you've not read yet. Do you want to read this out, dude? <coughs> okay. <laughs> According to the guidance secretary of oh geez, you gave give me this word. Piscataquis. Community High School. Uh, in Guilford, Maine, the defendant enrolled as a freshman in August 1985. He freshman, right? he's 15 years old. That's a little usually start at four, uh, 14. He graduated from high school on June 9th, 1989. So he did graduate. 
A transcript provided by the school noted the defendant was ranked 87 in his class of 87 <laughs> students, and he had a final grade point average of 75.83, which isn't that bad, I guess, on a scale of 100. Who knows? Um, they, they must have had a, been grading on a curve. But uh, when asked about his skills and talents, the defendant reported he's a talented singer and that he had relocated to Nashville, Tennessee to pursue a singing career. He added he enjoyed writing children's stories. Right. Let's let's just um, <laughs> stop right there. There's a lot oh. for us to grasp here. So, first of all, let's just get rid of the last part. He added he enjoyed writing children's stories. Now, everybody just ponder on that for a minute. Like, mm-hmm. what kind of children's stories is what I'm wondering? Like, Mr. Penis is thinking about Miss Vagina. What is she thinking? I mean, what is, like... Is that what he's talking about? Them? I mean, those are kind of children's stories. I mean, he did, you know, he did make up silly children's names for pieces of sexual organs. Yeah, he told Kayla some children's stories, right, about Mr. Penis and Miss Vagina and their happy meeting. That's which, true. What draws him to writing children's stories is that's the limit of his life experience, being a child. That's a good point. <laughs> and the limit of his, you know, intellectual ability. Right. He wrote a story about a lost kitten. That's pretty right. easy. I mean, a child could. He, he, could he literally write writes life. children's stories like that are written by children. It, yeah, and, and his and you know, like uh, taken abroad, feels like it's written by a child. Mm-hmm. You know? The creature certainly does. The creature. Mm-hmm. The best part's coming. Uh, so, but let, let's um, just very quickly um, chat about his 87 out of 87. Now, he would have been 15 when that was... I mean, that must have dented him. Oh, he seven. didn't even know. He was 19. Oh. He didn't... He graduated when he was 19 in high school. June. He, he's not born in 1970, so... He didn't... Oh, wait a minute. No, he was 18. He didn't turn 19 until October. Sorry. Never mind. He didn't know that he was 87 out of 87. He never reads these documents. So when the robot reminded him that he graduated last, he said, no, I weren't. Oh, we're not 87 out of 87. Mm-hmm. So it didn't, it didn't bother him. He didn't know. The only oh, time it bothered him is when she started calling him 87. <laughs> <laughs> That's brilliant. Wow. Um. Yeah, that's and also he def- the defendant reported he's a talented singer. Mm-hmm. Which I mean, it's nothing we knew. He thinks a lot of himself. Well, I'm going to report. I'm a talented singer too. Then, although I can't sing a lick. He's an I'm, unreliable I'm, reporter. So. I'm gonna, I'm, when it comes to that, I'm unreliable. Absolutely. I wish he had sang a song for the. <laughs> the probation or you know whoever was was he was talking to about this uh got to prove his talent um do you want to read on shin uh okay the defendant revealed he is presently writing a book about one of his current cellmates i didn't know that who was in the military and did a tour of duty in iraq the defendant advised advised it matters to him what others think of him. He said that twice already. And that he feels honest. honesty is very important. He reported he's good with his hands and that he has worked as a carpenter. The defendant revealed he owned and operated his own septic cleaning service and has worked in construction. He further described himself as thoughtful. Now, we're going to go down to his employment record at this point. So, Yeah, but I didn't know that he based taking abroad on a cellmate. Me either. Which is very interesting. Uh, loosely. I mean, maybe his cellmate said, yeah, I was in Iraq. and But I don't think Lauren, like, interviewed him. I don't think any no, no, of the exactly. contents of Taken Abroad, you know, came from this cellmate. I, was it was his name Aaron or was that a fictional name? Because I know he could have took a lot Vern. of the names. It was a gentry. Yeah. yeah. Right. Well, I know he took a lot of the names and taken abroad from people in prison. 
but I, I don't think it was based on. I think he did him. that to enter to get people interested in reading his his um his dribble, so they could see their name and find out what happens to their character. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he might be right there. Um. Right, okay, Fur describes himself as thoughtful. We don't need to ponder on that. Uh, employment yeah. record. The defendant was <laughs> was arrested on state-related charges uh, on October the 18th. He was remained in either state or federal custody since that time. Uh, according to the office manager at Trades Unlimited located in Nashville, the defendant was employed as a carpenter from... Was this when he was um, yeah. building a... Ch a gym for the church. church. A gym for a church. church yes. <laughs> uh, that Trades Unlimited is a temporary labor company. Oh, you so like they, an employment agency? And like, yeah, they send people out uh, temporarily. The so contractors don't hire people full time all all year round. They only do it when they have certain jobs. And uh, and he got to uh, they got they got a lull operator. So. <laughs> That's It'll really shit long. wages too, by the way. Twelve dollars an hour. That's yeah. Back then, that, that actually was. I mean, this was a long time ago. I don't think it was that bad back then, was it? Yeah, it's still bad. I, oh, was it? I mean, for carpentry, for carpentry, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Actually, supposedly skilled work. Um, they noticed the defendant worked for one week before <laughs> disappearing. <laughs> <laughs> I picture them all in a bar after work one day talking about, hey, whatever happened to that guy? And they look up on the news and they're, <laughs> there's that TV report. <laughs> there he is. <laughs> he disappeared. <laughs> That's just so funny. Oh, my God. Uh it was their understanding the defendant voluntarily quit without providing notice. They indicated the defendant was not eligible for rehire. I'm not surprised and that it would not get... <laughs> oh, dear, oh, dear. It just gets worse, friend, doesn't it? The, the more you read. It's not going yeah. well, is it? It's not going well at all, this. <laughs> oh, my God. Um, the That's defendant... a common theme, by the way. You're going to find that. Nobody's interested in considering to rehire him. But Okay. Sorry. <laughs> <It's all right. laughs> the defendant reported he was employed by Century 2 located in Nashville, Tennessee, from September, from September to October. Um, he advised this business, solicited donations for the fire department. Right, so that's his... Um, if you ever heard of the Beatles, it's that job. The defendant indicated he held a full-time position and was paid eleven dollars an hour. That's not bad for. Um... Yeah, I don't know what those positions go for, but yeah. He explained he left employment because he did not enjoy having a desk job. Yeah, I understand that. Uh, according to a representative with this company, the defendant was never an employee of the what? That's okay. I can explain that. I can explain that. Is it uh, I'm an agency. No, no. I believe that they they don't they weren't W twoing their employees. I, th I think they were ten ninety nine in them, which means they were all subcontractors. Um, I think that's the way this this company was it's kind of a it sounds like a dirt bag company. They were getting around paying payroll taxes, so he wasn't technically an employee, but he definitely worked there. It, it's, that's how they worded that. I would have liked to think that it's a little bit like uh, the Bob. Lazar story that you know Lazar, Bob Lazar said he worked at Area 51 he's been on Rogan and they tried when he announced that he worked there they tried deleting all his like his work history oh we never heard of this guy <laughs> he yeah, never maybe. existed he, he never went to school that's what they did with law he's like oh we can't, can't admit that this guy ever worked for us let's just fucking delete all his records <laughs> like, Lord, we certainly never employed Lord Armstrong what are you talking about Lonely Armstrong that guy that always wore that baseball cat no I don't know what you're talking about <laughs> I, um, wish, I wish they acknowledged him because they might have told the story about how he was bothering the other women in the in the, uh, in the building and he told him to stop. <laughs> that would have been great. It's like it's like reading somebody, some write some genius comedy writer said, "Right, I want you to I want you to write the outline for a comedy series, and this is it. This is what I'm thinking of a guy. We could write a sitcom about this guy. That's what all this is like. It's just so funny that this is true." Um, 
the kind of the representative of the defendant was it right? Okay. Um, <clears throat> do you want to read this bit, Shane, about his uh, business? Uh, yeah, uh, you got to scroll up a little bit for me. That's all. Um, it from in two thousand one. Yeah. Is that what we're gonna do? Yeah, yeah. Okay. In two thousand one, the defendant advised he opened A One Septic Service, a business he owned and which was located in Maine. He indicated this remains a legitimate business. However, he put it on hold when he re relocated to Nashville, Tennessee to pursue a singing career. The defendant reported he can return to his, his business and reestablish clients once he is released from custody. Bollocks. He said that for years after yeah. getting released from custody. When I start up my business again, I'll make your bank account look like shit. I thought he, <laughs> he started doing a septic business in Washington State. Uh, he open worked a for a septic business in Washington State, I think. Right. I think and... what happened, you know, this is how he got the Betty job. I think he did have an A1. I think, you know, I don't think he started the business, first of all. I think it was his brother who was the, uh, who was the originator of the business. But I, I think that this is how he got to meet Betty, because Betty was looking for a, uh, a plumbing hookup on her washing machine, and he came and saw the construction going around and then sold himself. So, oh, I, I, I thought she was, found him in the phone book. Yeah, A1 septic. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. To, but just to hook up her washing machine, not to do the construction. Right. Oh, right, right, right. You're right. Um, okay, put on hold. Okay, that's pretty much all there is, Andrew. Do you want to scroll it up? Because we go through his work history, which is really interesting. Yeah. Oh, here we go. He was employed by, by A plus and he named his business A one. Creative. Yeah. Okay. Uh, located in Lacey, Washington. There it is. Uh, from ninety nine to two thousand one. He reported he held a full time position and was responsible for driving the trucks, running the pumps, and doing repairs. The defendant advised he earned eleven fifty an hour. Uh, in this position, plus commission. He indicated he left this employment to return to his home state of Maine where he opened a similar business. Okay, that's... For approximately six months in 99, the defendant advised he was employed by Schneider National Lo uh, a Trucking Company located in Portland, Oregon. He reported he was hired as an over-the-road truck driver and was compensated at a rate of 22 cents a mile. The defendant revealed he left the employment because he did not enjoy the lifestyle. He didn't like desk jobs. He doesn't like this job, I guess. <laughs> According to payroll supervisor with, okay, here, here it is. Irving Tanning Company is located in Heartland, Maine. The defendant was employed as a laborer. He earned $8.50 an hour. They noted he was initially employed from February 5th. And this is early on in his life. This is when he was 24 years old, uh, to May 17th. So we're talking about uh, two and a half months, at which time he resigned. The defendant, again, was again hired on October 19th, 98, which is later on that year, and worked through August 19th. By the same company. By the same company, at which time he resigned. On July 24th, 2002, he comes back three years later, uh, the defendant was rehired. He worked through August 22nd, less than a month, uh, at which time he resigned his position. <laughs> the defendant was hired again on January wow. 19th, 2005, and resign that same day. <laughs> they, they noted they would not consider <laughs> re-employing them. So all this time, he was supposedly making a lot of money, but he kept having to go back to this tannery at eight fifty an hour, uh, and he kept quitting. So I'm not exactly sure where all this money that his uh, siblings have been robbing from him for years. I mean, he doesn't have much of a career. He doesn't have much skills here. Um, we don't know what was going on with that septic business. Um, but this is the extent of uh, Lauren's career right here. Quits jobs. Uh, I think he did the same thing with Walmart, too. I don't know if they'll talk about that. Where they he quit so often and they're not going to rehire him anymore. This, does this not um, sort of buy into this? He was flitting between Maine and Washington. So when he come back to Maine, he would get rehired by this company. But there's big gaps. So yeah, 94... Um, until 98, there's a gap. So do we have any explanation from him about what he was doing during that time? Probably babysitting. Who knows? 
Yeah, it's best not to think about it, isn't it? He was probably at the third ground looking for kids. I, I think he's getting unemployment. I think, uh, although it's a, you can't get unemployment if you resign. Uh, I think he was doing something. I, I think he was working under the table. I think he was working, you know, maybe victimizing the other people with handyman jobs. Uh, who knows? Um, mooching off someone. <laughs> mm. You see, this is the thing. We have this mystery of these years, the unknown years of Lorne Armstrong. Um, hmm. Interesting. He was employed as a laborer, too, so it wasn't exactly the, the best work. I think he, he couldn't have been working on his own business because yeah. it wouldn't... So, for instance, if he, if he wasn't in... I suppose it... I suppose he could have been, in theory. Um, he said he was earning... Didn't he say his his business turned over six figures? Yeah, hundred. I think 150000 a year or something like that. Something. can't remember what it was. This guy's never seen that, that kind of money. Oh, or, you know, that's the other thing. He could confuse himself with with sales versus profits. You know, no, but you even know. if it's sales, it's still good. You know, you're turning it, it, over 150000 a year. Exactly. I agree. But we have nothing on But that. he's never been successful uh, in his career. That, that's for sure. I think there's more to this um, underneath this. Maybe not. But, you know, if this is it, that's all he has to report to probation. And also, probation is doing their due diligence by calling these workers, anything that Lawrence says. So they actually talk to the payroll supervisor at this place. Oh, here we go. <laughs> this is good. Uh, the defendant added he sold Kirby vacuums in Olympia, Washington for two to three months. However, he was not able to recall the name of, of any business he sold for or how much he earned in this endeavor. The defendant indicated he left this, this line of work to go to Schneider. Now, okay. Because he was broke. Great salesman. You imagine him showing up at the, uh, the door. How much chicken that guy said? Let's get out of here. <laughs> I thought he admitted he never sold a single vacuum cleaner. <laughs> He's probably sticking his dick in it. That's why. Um, uh, the defendant indicated... Right, okay. The defendant advised... Ooh, a bit of Air Force background. Oh, I'll read this bit. In fact, no. Amanda James, you've got to read this paragraph in a full long voice. Yes. I'm joking. But you can uh, still read it. Just read it in a normal voice. The advised he enlisted that, that paragraph? Yeah. The defendant advised he enlisted in the U.S. Air Force in April 1991. He advised he was either honorably or other than honorably discharged in January 1993. The defendant reported his highest rank was that of E3. He explained he was discharged because he failed a test and was told to either go to a different career field or leave the service the defendant indicated he was trained as a refueler and or truck mechanic he added he was also part of the decontamination team the defendant reported he received certification in basic training diesel mechanics and technical school he added he was also a coach for a children's mini mite basketball the team fuck? <laughs> oh dear and that he received an award for his voluntary activity. Even Even the dog can't get his head around that. He's like, this lawn is just minute, so full of shit. Yeah, why I got up better. Why didn't, that, why didn't he put that award in his trophy case? <sighs> well, oh, the I find this quite... Um, he was given an award. Just think about this, guys, as you're listening to it. This sex offender was given an award for coaching a children's basketball team. I suppose it won't be the first time that uh, people in such positions have been up to no good, but uh, hey, it's, kind of it's still amusing. Who get what volunteer coaches get awards? I mean, I think it's one of them here? where it's one of those scenarios where you get an award for just turning up. You know what I mean? They're so desperate for people. They're like, yeah, it's, it's like if you work at mcdonald's and you get a star on your badge for mopping up sick or something you know right 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 okay or this is just again made up bullshit <laughs> yeah exactly it's just <laughs> the, <laughs> oh dear but i think we can gather from this in case anybody needed it you know spelling out long can't hold the job down for very long can he 
No. He's all over the place, literally. Well, it shows that he's lived a life of poverty. You well, know, I was going to say, it shows he lived a life of ill discipline, if anything else. Uh, indiscipline, should I say. Yeah. Well, again, this goes contrary to everything he says about him being a business success. I don't see that where there's room or time in that narrative that probation discovered about him where he could be a business success. And I certainly would think that that would be some there would be some mention of his business success in this report. Um, I don't know. But, you know, it's right well, there. It's, it's laid out. So During the catfishing, I never saw them, but he, when he would brag about how much money he used to make, he took pictures of old checks, like very old checks, and sent them to the catfish as proof that he had been successful at one point and I always thought just like with the Betty situation yeah he she gave him a big chunk of money but he didn't complete the job right so I wonder if he just got a few big checks here and there and just and just fucked off like he did to Betty right hmm um you know, he could have he could have stuck it out in the Air Force. He might have done all right for himself. I know it's not easy, but you know, he could have gained gen you know, real skills, um, training, discipline. Yeah, he probably got bullied the fuck out of, but um I don't think they wanted him, Andrew. No Don't I'm, you have to be smart well, to be in the Air Force? I mean, he failed the test, didn't he? And they told him to either fuck off or clean the stirs. Is basically what they said to him. What's his skills now? He he supposedly learned diesel mechanics. That's a good job. Well, that's what I was going to say. You know, you get giving him a good start, some kind of direction, some kind of focus. But he he just was. He's not the type of person to embrace that kind of um, that kind of life. You know. Um, Mm. um, Okay. Have you got any thoughts, Amanda James, on his um, voluntary activity for the Mini Mike basketball team and the fact that he got an award? Uh, gross. I, <laughs> I think he probably shouldn't have mentioned that. Just like with him <laughs> writing children's books, he thinks these things make him look virtuous. And, oh, I couldn't molest a kid. I love kids. I taught him to play basketball. I loved kids since I was a kid. But it just raises a red flag. Why did you want to coach a children's basketball team, Lorne? Yeah, when you couldn't even hold down a job. The, right, uh, that's mighty suspicious. Well, the record, I think the record was 0-87. So I don't i don't think he did that well. <laughs> I, I can't imagine him, you know, being a coach, you know, a lot of that job is done during practice and they do drills and they do all kinds of, uh, you know, uh, skill set kind of um, uh exercises and things. I don't think he knows any of that stuff. I mean, but then again, you talk about Mighty Mike's. Just go out there and have fun, kids. I don't know. Yeah, you just throw the ball around and he's not really teaching them anything. I, 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 They're I, just I, little I just kids. Hope, I just hope he didn't pat any little kid on the tushy. That's it. I bet he did. Yeah, it's best not to let your mind go down that road too much. Um, Right, if much further, I didn't really want to, I wanted to kind of end it here. Have we got, uh, yeah, we're going to have to, we'll just finish this and then we'll have to wrap it up and see if we need to. Huh? Is there anything left on this thing? I, I think we got uh, to the have we, well, well, we'll just finish this and then we'll look at it later and decide if there's uh, anything worth going over. Um, uh, a request for his military records was sent to the National Personal Records Centre, uh, they responded and indicated the defendant's record had not be- not yet been received by the centre and referred to the request. Well, it's basically like they've said they've deleted all knowledge of this guy. It's like, whoa, <laughs> hang on a minute. Did this get Lauren Armstrong? That's basically what they've done. We've never heard of him. Don't know what you're talking well, all about. All they need to say is he's not eligible for rehire. That's all I want to say. <laughs> You could just imagine some office where some red lights started flashing when the information request was sent through. We got a code Lauren. We've got a code Lauren. Um he just leaves a wake of embarrassment wherever he goes. But uh yeah, so we will in fact I'll tell you what, let me just um 
Let's have a quick whiz through the plea agreement. I think we might have been done, you know. I think we. I think so too. That's the, that's the uh, the meat of it of that whole thing that we'd be interested in. There's a lot of legalese stuff. There's a lot of, like I said, talking about his sentencing guidelines, uh, talking about again impact of, 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 of the plea, the fines, probation. All that stuff is pretty dry. Yeah, but uh, it's definitely been worth. Um, it's definitely been worth going over. Um, mm-hmm. We have got. Um, so I think we're gonna finish Lon's unfinished book. So me and uh, Shin and Amanda James, we kind of went through the creature Lon's bizarre book, which makes taking abroad seem like a masterpiece. Um, but we we kind of. There's some unfinished material that we've got to go through. So I think have you f- have you got some more material for us, Amanda James? Because you were transcribing it. Yeah, I can't. I can't. You didn't remind me to look, so I did not look. But I, as as far as my memory goes, we only have one chapter left to do. I don't know if I've transcribed it yet, but if I haven't, I can do that with no issue. But we're almost done. Yes, well, we're going to finish that. There's some more topics that we're going to discuss. Uh, just to basically summarise it, we'll never dry up entirely of law material as long as we're still, as long as we still enjoy it. We'll still do streams every now and again. I think as much as it pains me to know that, you know, oh God, just think about how many hours I've spent doing this. I could be a fucking millionaire. But anyway, never mind. Learn five languages. Well, we still have so much of the chat log. To go through. I know. Yeah. We'll never finish Amanda, that. We have a it, lifetime where. Amanda, is there a sex scene in uh, the creature? No, there was. Oh, let me think. He glossed over, over it. Kisses and things like that. I know that. Right. He. They did. They clearly did have sex because she was pregnant, but he didn't give us details like moist center or whatever he said she didn't expel dampness yeah he didn't he didn't go into i think maybe he even realized okay these are teenagers these are underage people i can't talk about moist centers 15 year old breasts yeah right manhood growing or whatever the fuck he said um i'd have to go back and see but he did he, he glossed over it he made it known that they were they were doing it they were consummating their love they couldn't hold back the love they felt for each other, and their bodies took their natural course. I think that was from Taken Abroad. That's just strange. Their bodies took their natural course. What, dying? What's the natural course of your body? <laughs> oh, that's a morbid <laughs> sex scene, if you can picture that in your brain. Two corpses nope. getting it on. No calcium deficient creature will get oh, I was thinking about that the other day, because we were messaging, weren't we? We're going to get the creatures on. I was thinking... Oh my god! Like the the calcium deficiency that that must be the worst description of a monster. <laughs> like because you're supposed to write something that's going to instill fear in you. It's a lot more difficult to do when you're writing it rather than showing it. You know, it's like you've really got to be good. It's like calcium deficiency. It's like <laughs> <laughs> the hunchback Grinch. The compromised creature. Made me feel bad for the creature. He needs to see a doctor. <laughs> oh dear, oh dear. What was it? Green. Oh, it was like some kind of predator yeah, type creature that was a cat face. It had a cat face. That's right. The Grinch. Yes. It is the Grinch. It is with a with one of its hands missing because it got chopped off, didn't it? Oh, and if the you, if, you know, the best way to best way to fight it is throw one of your friends at it. That's what you do. <laughs> Or escape you know, through you know, uh, a lake underground. Yeah, I'm sorry. One you of the male have, friends. Keep, yeah, you, keep you the females safe. The, you don't have to outrun the creature. You you have to outrun your friends. That's it. And make sure you got your pregnant girlfriend there kissing all the way while you're running, opening every door. That's what I remember about him. And and there's a cave that's so they're so resourceful. They find barrels of oil and. Kind of Don't forget about the lake underground. Donuts and coffee. They find coffee everywhere they go. Thank yeah. God. There's a snowmobile outside. And you got to remember, they're at the base of the mountain, too. They can't get off. <laughs> right. <laughs> One of my favorite parts is when 
the couples have been split up because one significant other from each couple has been killed by the creature. So the remaining <laughs> girl and boy just start flirting with each other. And now they're just kind of together. They're like, well, my boyfriend just died and you were his best friend. So we might as well spend our time together. That's what would happen in Lon's world. That's how he sees it all. Going. People are just so casual about who they hook up with. Yeah, why not? <laughs> he started he start a thruple with one of the uh, coupleless people. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, I'm 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 kind of looking forward to finishing it in some way because it was such a bizarre piece of. I mean, I will say. You know, this is like, it's not a finished book. We can critique Taken Abroad as much as we like because he published it. Not only did he finish it, the motherfucker published it. So it deserves all the criticism it gets. This thing is just like a rough draft, but it's still funny. Um, So we'll finish that soon, guys. So thank you very much. We've had a lot of people listening to this, so it's very good to have had you all here. Um, As I think somebody, um, Wayne... Wayne Tech 10 said, in conclusion, he was pathetic from the word go. I think that pretty much summarizes very well what that um, pre sentencing report yeah. um, told us, really. Not that we didn't know that already, but, uh, you know, it's sometimes fun to go over these official documents just to, just to confirm the theories that we've been holding. Right. So, yeah, exactly. So, um, yes, thank you to... Um, Amanda James and Shin for giving us the precious time. And is it okay? I'd like to wish every uh, tenderhead out there a, um, a wonderful Mother's Day. All you, uh, all you mothers out there. Amanda, happy oh, Mother's I'm Day. I'm a mother. Thank you. Happy Mother's Thank Day. You. Yes. Have a Thank great day. Or even, even Gwendolyn. Are we wishing a happy Mother's Day to Gwendolyn Armstrong? Her more than anyone. She needs it. Yeah, I it. would say she deserves it. Yeah, yeah, there you go. That's nice. Bit of goodwill. I mean, as, long as, as, long as, son, as, as long as her son, as long as would that mean that her son is going off on somebody on uh, on some wrecking ball call right now? Maybe <laughs> instead Possibly. of spending money with, with his mother. Right, never mind. <laughs> right. Okay. Thank you very much, everybody. I hope you enjoy the rest of your day.